You got it right. It is time for another episode of On Top and Hot. And I'm your host, John Zadar. And today, it's October 15th. It's Tuesday. Now, you know what we like to do here. We like to focus in on a hot penny stock. One I found through the day as I was trading penny stocks. I trade stocks under five bucks every single day. And I'm always looking for a stock that has heat, that has potential to make us money. Now, before we jump into the stock I found today, I feel I should apologize to you. I shared VVPR with you yesterday, which is a great company. I like it. She took a dip today. And as a day trader, we don't like to see that. But I do believe in the company. VVPR has got a solid product. They've got lots of business. Revenues are building up and about ready to come in. I think it's going to be a great swing play. But the one I probably should have shared with you was drug. I saw that at three o'clock in the afternoon yesterday on Penny Boys and I shared it with everybody over there. When I looked at the chart and I looked at level two, I could tell there was pent up heat here. I thought it was going to explode and I told everybody that at Penny Boys. Well, she dribbled a little bit before the bell, but she didn't do a whole lot. Well, then I made the video on VVPR, finished that, went back to look at drug and Oh my God, she had jumped over 100% after market. I felt pretty validated about that. Well, then today she showed a little bit of anxiousness at the bell. She was at $3.50. She took off like a rocket. Folks, I'm not kidding you. She ran hard all day, hitting a high of $33 today. Starting at $3.50, she went to $33. And we took money from that over and over and over again. Because we don't play the long play, getting at the bottom and hope for the best, looking for the top. No. We play probable movements. We find supports and resistances on the charts. Those supports and resistances tell us where to get in on the next play. Where we should get out, our target, when things are good. And we put in a stop loss, an emergency exit if things go bad. And this limits your loss. So you're not going to lose too much. And that's important because you're not going to win every single trade. So you control how much you're going to lose. Well, drug today, we took chunks out of that bad boy all the way up. We had people who had six trades today taking lots of money, $3,000 in profit without one loss. Now, we are not trying to take as much money as we can. We're not looking for the biggest gains we can get. That doesn't enter our mind, believe it or not. All we're looking for is a probable move to win. Just win the trade and you're making money. You don't have to count it. You know it's accumulating over there. I got three wins. I got four wins. Don't count your money until the game is over. And all day, everybody was riding that. So these are the sort of plays we do over there, these quick fast, short plays that put money in your pocket today. So come try us out. See if I'm BSing you folks. Come trade with the wizard. We got a link down below. It says this is the Penny Boys link. Not too tough to find. I am over there every single day and you can show up anytime through the day, any day of the week, as often as you like. I'd love to see you there. Well, today we're going to take a look at ticker O-N-E-I, One Meta Inc., now, I like this company. The chart's a little cool. I'm going to be honest with you. This is probably going to be more of a swing play. I can't see the volume flooding in tomorrow, but I can see it coming in because we have got a lot of catalysts here, folks. There is just a full plate of catalysts here, more than I thought we even had. The chart's got light volume. She is in a position of growth right now. She could break out when that volume comes out. Just want you to know that up front. So don't be jumping into this first thing in the morning thinking she's going to run. Wait for the volume to start coming in. So let's talk about One Meta. One Meta is a company here in the U.S. based out of Utah. She finished today at almost 60 cents. What a ridiculous price. Look at all those extra digits here behind the 5.9. Why? Why do we need those? Can't we just bid in pennies? And that's the problem. You can bid clear down here. Well, how long is it going to take to turn, turn the odometer and get all these numbers to turn so we can get this to 60? We need to get rid of all these numbers and just start bidding pennies. So right now, it is going very slow. She was up about 20% today, which is almost 10 cents. She is on the OTC, the middle tier. 
the OTCQB, which we like to refer to as the better tier. Better than what? Better than the pinks, by a long shot. First off, you got a minimum bid price on the QB. Can't be under a penny. Go under a penny for too long, they'll kick you off and you go back down to the pink. But the best thing about the QB is we start to get validated information. And that's the problem with pinks. You don't get validated information down there. You get hearsay. You get stuff the management's told you. So you got to take their word for everything. Up here, the financials have to start being audited by a CPA. Pinks don't have audits done. They just tally up the receipts and show us the numbers. Doesn't help us much. Here we're getting numbers that are actual, factual, that we can use to weigh up the company. They're called fundamentals. So we've got real numbers we can use. And we've got real information, validated information with our verified profile and our transfer agent verified. So things look good in that department. We've also got independent directors listed over here. And on the otcmarkets.com website, the reason you list them here is when the company has serious aspirations of uplisting. Now, I don't know if that's to the QX or to the NASDAQ, but everybody wants to uplist. And everybody says that in their news presses. Well, this is coming from some other sincere form of information. So when we see this over here, you can believe that they are planning on uplisting soon. So what is this company all about? It's a very interesting company. I like their product. I think they have first mover advantage. I don't think they're the only ones to have this, but I think they've got first mover advantage. They have a product that can translate languages on anything. Your phone, somebody up on stage talk, talking into a microphone, your computer, just everything. One Meta Inc. is a multilingual enablement company focused on overcoming the communication challenges of a world with over 7,100 different languages. Its proprietary end-to-end -end natural language processing architecture developed using generative AI tools allows the spoken and written word to be synthesized and translated and transcribed in less than one second. Folks, it is literally one-eighth of a second. 200 milliseconds. You get on the phone speaking English, you're talking to somebody in Japan speaking Japanese, you start to talk in one eighth of a second, it is being translated for them and they hear exactly what you are saying. And then they speak and one eighth of a second later, you hear what they're saying. Unbelievable. And you can do this for live streaming events on the computer so everybody can talk to each other. It can be transcribed across the screen. It can be used for anything, folks. One Meta's products support near real-time web-based and mobile phone-based conversations, discussions, meetings, online chats in over 150 languages. One Meta's technology is fully compliant with SOC2, HIPAA, and GTPR standards, ensuring the highest levels of security and privacy for all communications. Now, let your imagination be your guide here, folks. Anything that is restricted by language can be changed. Whether it be a movie you're watching, somebody talking on stage, even an app. There are so many popular apps that are locked up because of language constraints. If they could open that up to 150 different languages, that's more than 150 countries. How many countries speak Spanish? Yeah, right? So you can literally go global by using this product. Let's take a look at the news. There is a lot to be said here, folks, and I'm going to only headline most of it, but we're going to take a look at two of them. Every single one of these is important. We are all the way back here to April of this year. One Meta expands the company's presence on Microsoft's corporate websites. Now stop and think about that. Their product is on Microsoft's websites. Do you think Microsoft would let any junk company onto their websites? No way. This is a strong endorsement as far as I'm concerned. Not only is Microsoft using them, but they've got them on their own website. The company reduces translation speed to less than 200 milliseconds. The company begins translation services for the Archdiocese of Oklahoma City. Microsoft welcomes one meta solution to the growing app source ecosystem. 
This is what I was talking about. You can incorporate this onto your apps so that where they've been being used, they can now break free from and start covering the entire globe. Imagine the growth potential there, folks. Here in June, revolutionizing healthcare accessibility, LCP Transportation Partners with One Meta's Verbium Call. That's their new product, Verbium Call for multilingual patient support. I think that's a great place to have it in hospitals. Now, I know they're probably talking about online health care, but even in a hospital, somebody comes in that can't speak your language, you got to go get a translator before you even know what the problem is. That could be a, a dire situation. So I can see this being very critical in the health industry. Next piece of news comes out at the end of June, one meta and Tomball ISD launched pilot to transform multicultural communication in education. Wow, that is awesome, folks. The first thing that popped into my mind there is a professor from Israel who only speaks Hebrew comes over here to America University and starts teaching an English class. It's not a problem. Everybody could have headphones or it could be up on the screen and dialogue, whatever. This teacher can now be over here teaching Americans and the language is not a problem anymore. I mean, just let your imagination run wild. One Meta and Five Nine uh, sign an independent software vendor program agreement. I do want to dive into this one. This came out July 24th. They tell us that Five Nine is one of the leaders in the call center solutions marketplace as its users uses end-to-end -end digital engagement, analytics, and workforce optimization to increase agent productivity. Five9 represents over 3,000 enterprise, mid-market, and SMB customers worldwide, with over 350,000 concurrent agent seats, and in 2023, handled over 14 billion recorded call minutes. No small operation. Five9 states, Partnering with One Meta opens new avenues for our joint customers to expand internationally by harnessing their cutting edge AI transcription technology. This collaboration empowers businesses to overcome language barriers, enhancing global communication and driving growth with unmatched precision and clarity. We anticipate the rollout of our service during the third quarter of this year. Well, that's already happened. We're going into our fourth quarter. So this is being rolled out right now. The next piece of news, the company and Carasoft agree to revolutionize multilingual communication within government agencies. This is for every agency in America, local, federal, state, all of them will incorporate this, which obviously is going to be great. You can deal with your patrons in your state, the bigger uh, agencies can deal with foreign countries. Come on. You can see how wherever you use this product, it's going to make life simpler and it's going to make commercialization of what we have just explode. You've been selling your product only here and now you can sell it all over there because people understand what you've got. And then the last piece of news here, one meta and Genesis sign app foundry ISV partner agreement. They tell us that Genesis is one of the major CCAS leaders in the customer and employee service experience and contract center solutions industry. Their contract center software is used throughout the world. Genesis represents over 6,000 employees and represents over 8,000 organizations in over 100 countries. Global growth in a very big way. Gensys improves loyalty and business outcomes by creating a best experience for customers and employees by delivering their services through Gensys Cloud, the number one AI powered experience orchestration platform. You see, it really doesn't matter what the product is. You want to get it to other markets, you need to speak their language and that's going to take care of the problem for a lot of people. So we've got a lot going on here and I'm not even done yet. We got one more deal I want to share with you, but it's in the filings. So we're going to wait till we get to the filings to see that. So let's take a look at the relative volume now. Yeah, I told you volume is down, really down. First off, we are on the OTC market where 
Today's volume was 4.7 billion. 4.7 billion shares divided up amongst 12,300 companies. Lots of companies didn't get any shares sold today. This used to be 60 to 70 billion before COVID. After COVID, it just started falling, falling, falling. And we have been between three and five billion for almost two years now. We have not got this back up yet. So her volume over the last 30 days has been an average of under 10,000 shares, which is really, really critically low. I agree. And today she did about half of that, less than half of that, 4.4 thousand. So yes, we need volume in a very, very big way. Share structure for the company. Well, that's not looking too bad. It's looking better. Outstanding share count is about 34 million. The insiders own the lion's share, about 20 million. We get the rest, about 15 million. That is an excellent float, folks. Anything under 100 million, I consider a decent float. A low float is considered 10 million or less. I think of a low float as 25 million or less. So whichever way you want to slice it, we've got a really decent float going on here. Market cap for the company, we currently are at 17 million. Financials for the company. All right, you can see we don't have a lot of money going on over here. Thank God for three zeros. We had $5,000 four years ago, not $5. Not much over the last three years. At the end of 2023, we had a booming year of $70,000. And the neat thing here is, is because of their product, it's AI, it's like computer program. It's nothing you have to build or buy materials for or package or ship. There's no overhead expense. You get to keep all of your money. It's a digital product. So they got to keep every single penny of what they made. Thank God. Taking a look at the quarterlies, those aren't looking very good. Year ago, we were at 44,000 and she's just been dropping down to $5,000. So all of that news, it's a big deal. They just launched their Verbium product here recently, not too long ago. And as you can see, there have been lots of takers, lots of contracts going to be setting up lots of seats and businesses with this. And I'm sure this is going to be a subscription based business. Now, whether they charge per seat, per phone, per unit, per device, per company, I don't know, but it's going to be repetition over and over again, month after month, that money's going to come in. And I'm sure this business is going to grow and grow and grow. And as they start to grow like Netflix, I'm sure that they're going to raise their prices. And then the revenues are going to even get bigger and bigger because they have so many customers and clients then. Taking a look at the balance sheet for the company. Don't forget those three zeros over here as well. Cash, cash equivalents, I like to think of as the bank. We got about $323,000 in the bank. That's pretty much all their assets, $339,000. Liabilities is like four to five times as much, $1.5 million. So we are holding stockholder deficit of $1.2 million. Not a great scenario. But you know what I see here? It looks exactly like a startup company. They've just got their first product. They are a company that's going to be coming out with more products, but this is their primary first product. They have it. They're launching it. They've got contracts going into operation right now. They have a little bit of assets and they have more debt. That's exactly what you get, but it's not overwhelming. It's pretty much balanced. So I think this is a great entry time for this company. This is a startup company that could be huge. Could be a giant company in five years. Absolutely. And let's take a look at our disclosures. We've got one disclosure here that came out here recently on the 9th of October. The other 8K came out all the way back in August. I want to share this one with you because it is another deal. They didn't even come out with the news press about this. And the worst part is, is I can't share it all with you. This is an 8K and that's the entire thing. We just hit the bottom. So I can't even get this over my head to show you what it all says, but I'll read it to you like I always do. On October 8th of this year, the company entered into an original equipment manufacturer's agreement with In Contact. In Contact is an affiliate of NICE. NICE is a company incorporated in Israel 
who shares are on the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange and their ADSs are traded on the NASDAQ. NICE is one of the largest customer service companies in the world. In contact will distribute and sell the company's OEM solutions. They have exclusivity period of 18 months. Nobody can take it away from them for those areas and a long term of three years initially. So here is another very large company, biggest in the world that is going to be using their product, probably based on subscription for every seat, every unit, every device, however they set it up. Folks, I see a lot of potential here. The money is going to be rolling in. Uh, in these sort of subscription deals, you saw what happened to Netflix. It just got bigger and bigger and bigger and more and more people started using it. And when the world sees how easy it can be to communicate, no matter how you're communicating, you know, like the UN, you've got every single country in there, every single person speaking their own language and everybody in there understands what everyone's saying because they got those headphones on, but somebody has to translate. And that person is not going to be one eighth of a second behind, right? They're going to be lagging. They may cough. They may have to take a pee break. They may get something wrong. AI is going to change everything. I'll bet you the UN uses this. I'll bet you. So that's what we got going folks. The company looks like a starter, starter company with a lot of contracts starting up right now with a lot of big companies all around the world. It looks luscious. Let's go take a look at that chart. We are now over here at my free trading platform where I just got my mind blown. You want your mind blown? <laughs> take a look at drug. Came over here just to see what's what and oh my God. She closed the day at about $34 after starting the day at $3, 1,100% run. Then after market in an hour and a half, while I've been making this video, she jumped from $34 up to almost 60 bucks from $34 to 60 bucks, almost a hundred percent in an hour and a half after market. And she did that yesterday too, but it looks a lot different here. She did about a hundred percent run there as well. So this was a wild stock today. I really don't expect this to go any higher, but then I wasn't expecting that to happen either. And it looks to me like she's bouncing. I see a green bar right there. Like she's still wanting to climb and there's no explanation for why she's this high right now. She has hit all time highs in three years. She has never been this high folks. Now you see all these yellow lines down here. These yellow lines are my supports and resistances. These are how we get in and out of place. This is where the stock changes direction. It bounces up or it bounces down and you get them from past history. Well, we get in on top of a support just past the red light, just over it. And we get out just before the next red light, the next support. And we take that as a gain, a probable move. We lock those gains in. You can't take them away from it. Then we go to the next one. Well, this was a little gainer. A lot of people chose not to play that one and they waited for it to get to the next one. You can't blame them. This was a nice big spread here. We went from about uh, $10 and three cents up to $11 and 30 cents. And for every thousand shares you purchase, that is $10 for every penny it moves. So this sort of move right here would have given you, oh goodness gracious, $300. That was a $300 play, get in over top and sell underneath and then do the same thing all the way up. We had people today who got in and out of this stock six times, never lost that six wins, had no clue how much money they had until the end of the day when they went through and checked it all out. We don't look at the gains folks. We look at the wins. The more wins you have, the more money you're obviously making. And of course you're going to lose sometimes. That's why we use stop losses. We know how much we want to lose and we put in a sell order there. If it goes down to that point, it sells and ejects us out of these deals. But what's most important as far as I'm concerned is when you're making these short trades, you're building up your confidence. Six wins in a day. Boy, what a power boost that is. All right. Now that we've had our entertainment, Let's go take a look at ticker O N E I O N E I. That's right. This is one meta. Let's dive on back to the six month, four hour chart. 
So it was back here in March, we had our high of $1.39. In September, we had a low of about 18 and a half cents. While she was over the climbing 200 day MA here, she had lots of volatility. Big bounces, bouncing off of that 200. Once she came underneath it, that pulled the 200 down. She went into a downtrend, the price started falling. She was underneath everything here. Then she had this sudden drop, right? She's up here at 39 cents and she drops 50% all the way down to this low bubble of 18 cents. See how fast she jumped up? Now, I wouldn't say try to buy here, but what you do see is an instant bounce back from a low bubble. This can signify the company has value in the investor's eyes. When you hit a low bubble, it's like a flashing for sale sign. Come get me. Lots of people shop low bubbles. As soon as one pops up, they'll go check the fundamentals, look at the news, see what the catalysts are. And if things look good, you'll see that stock start to rise. We had a bounce off of this immediately. She pushed herself through all of the MAs here and she has pushed herself up to and is testing that 200 haul. What we've got is an atypical breakout here, folks. And if you look real close, it's a perfect setup. We have our 200 day MA at the top going flat right now. It is going flat. This is the perfect time for a breakout. We have our 200 haul, which is the price's friend underneath. It just turned blue right now. Now, normally I would expect a dip down to this blue and hit that and launch up to and through the 200. That's what I'm expecting. Now we don't see the volume. It just doesn't look like it's going to happen, but it could, it could change just like that. The volume come in and one bounce could throw this puppy over top of that 200 and she would start to launch up through my supports and resistances here. And I believe we can get, well, we're down here right now at 59 cents and my top support is at $1.20. I think that's a possible place she could go. We could get a hundred percent run out of this with the volume and a decent float. But I see up here at about a dollar six, a dollar five. I see that as most probable folks. She gets over top of this 200. She's going to shoot. Now, chances are she's going to come back down. She'll come back down to the 200 because it takes a lot of energy to get through the 200. Think of it as a two by four and your 50 might be a plank and your 20 day would be a piece of plywood and your nine day would be a piece of balsa wood. So to break through a two by four, you need a lot of strength. So she's going to push through that and overshoot, but then she's going to need a rest, come back down, hit that 200, bounce around on it a little bit, and then hopefully take off. So we've got a perfect setup right now on the long chart. Looking at our oscillators, our PPO, percentage price oscillator is climbing. Our MACD is climbing, just like the percentage price oscillator. You want the blue line on the top pushing up. And our RSI is taking a bit of a dip right now. But what I like is my setup here. My PPO is climbing. That blue line is going up. My ADX is falling. ADX is trend continuation. Trend continuation, it, it doesn't matter if it's going up or down or sideways. It's just a straight line. Well, when you see these lines separating, going further and further apart, it is a 100% guarantee that your price is rising rising. So I expect when we come down to the one hour chart, we're going to have green bars there. And our RSI is, as I said, falling because the RSI is your price. Change all these bars into a line and it's going to look like that. Same exact line. So when the price falls, the RSI falls, which is why everyone gets excited when the RSI rises because the price is rising. Take a look at our 20 day, one hour view. Not a lot of bars there, right? I see more green volume than I do red volume. She's bouncing off of this 200 haul here, right across it, pulling away from it right now. She's pushing up through the 200, down, she's dipped, coming back up. Things look like she is getting ready to jump, folks. Look at how big these bars are. These bars are all about the same size. These are starting to get bigger. They're starting to push up. All of our MAs have all curved up and starting to climb. 200 here is just about ready to go flat. Oscillators, every single one of them is climbing right now on the one hour chart. Take a look at our five day, 15 minute. 
Not a lot of bars there. What do we got going? We got a nine day MA here. Climbing, took a dip and it's climbing. Our oscillators are kind of flat right now. Real tough to look at this on the 15 minute. I wonder what the five minute looks like. Even worse, even worse. As I said, volume has been really low on this company. Under 10,000 shares as a daily average for the last month. And today she only did 4,000 shares. But looking at the longer chart, folks, we can see she is moving into a position to break out. This one is my favorite. That's an atypical breakout coming up off of a low bubble, breaking through everything, tapping a flat 200 with a 200 haul going blue, all of our oscillators in perfect condition. I'm liking this. Now, if the volume comes in, you're going to want to make this a short play, folks. Get in and get out. She breaks out. I would look to get out at about 96 cents. That would be my first play. If she keeps on moving, all right, here's the best way to play it. Best advice I can give you. You get in here. Once she goes over this 200, you're going to want to get in at about 74, 75. I'm expecting her to have a strong burst. So ride that burst up to 95 cents. Sell half of what you got. It's not an all or nothing decision. You don't have to get rid of it all and you don't have to hold it all. Sell half. Take some of those gains. Lock them up into your pocket. Let the rest of those shares ride for more gains. When she starts climbing again, sell some more at $1.07. That's underneath the next support. Sell 25% of what you've got left. And then if she's still running, take the next part up to the next support. And that's how you scale out. And since it don't cost you anything to buy or sell shares, it isn't costing you any money. You could also use a trailing stop loss. If your broker uses them, put in a stop loss once she gets over this price and you get in at 75. Put in a stop loss down here at about 66. If she comes below 66, it's going to automatically sell and throw you out of it. She comes under that 200, there's a chance she could start falling hard. But a trailing stop loss will take that stop loss and move with you. As the price rises, the stop loss keeps going up. So it'll climb behind you. And when you finally fall the distance that you put behind, then it'll sell. But as long as the price goes up, you keep taking more gains and don't have to worry about moving your stop loss up. So I am liking O-N-E-I, folks. I think she has as much potential as VVPR. Both are coming into the money. They both have a lot of new contracts. They both need the money, and that's what every company needs is revenues. And that's what we're looking at here, revenues. We're going to have to wait for the next financial to see if they get any better. But as I said, this is set up right now. And people that play charts like me look for setups. Don't even look at the news. Don't even look at the filings. All we're looking for is a setup. And when this starts showing that it's breaking out over the 200, people like me are going to start getting into the stock regardless of what's going on with the company. They're going to play the technicals. And this is in a technically hot spot right now. So keep your eye on it. Put it on your watch list. You've been warned. That's everything I got for you today, folks. Hope you got something from me. I always get something from you. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.